Hey everybody, welcome to the unofficial pre-show for 10th floor. I'm just waiting on mom. I've been waiting on her for 15 minutes. She's on the way, but I, I, I felt like I should just come on and say hey everybody so she'll be popping in whenever she's ready. But I thought I'd want to come in and say hi. Start reading the chat. Hang out with y'all. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah. So we'll, we'll call this a test run. We'll call this the uh, the, 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 the tech rehearsal. <laughs> but it's not just me. Hi, Shannon. Michelle. Kelly. Jeannie. Sandra. Lola's mother. Estee. Everybody here. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, handsome Matt. Kelly, you're, so, you're always flirting with me. I'm going to have to come up to Canada someday. Good, I'm glad everybody can hear me. I'm going to have to come up to Canada and hang out with Kelly. Have her take me out to dinner. Be a good time. Use her money instead of mine. Mine's limited. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I mean, we, we I, I wasn't sure when we were going to be doing this thing. So if you joined us at 9 a.m. for Days for Dummies... Uh, I said, I, I am, I just, I, I adjusted it at one time, Kelly, that's it, no more. I, uh, if you were here for Days for Dummies, you know, I wasn't sure if this was going to be at 11, if it was going to be 2, hello, Cindus. Uh, we're just waiting on my show up here. Um, uh, but clearly, 11 a.m., reached out to Ma, she said, let's just do it at 11, there's no reason to wait, it's not going to be any easier later. So, that's where we're at. Did everybody watch this week? I hope we watch this week. It's really hard to not want to, to watch General Hospital this week. Oh, Sandra, that's so kind. Sandra says that I'm in Cat's generation. We're sometimes stretched thin, but we come through, and she does. She always has. My mother has always come through for me. Can't think of a time where she didn't. Oh, well, gosh, I just feel so blessed. I, I, I recognize and understand that's not the same for everybody else. <laughs> Jenny, who's Jenny, Kaiwan? You talking about me? <laughs> uh, but yeah, GA, just it's been an excellent week, Jeannie, getting getting us back on track. Uh, did you guys watch? I hope you watched. It's been it's been hard to not. Um, you know, I'll admit, sometimes getting through a soap is a little bit of a slog. But not this week. This week has been exciting. It's been punchy. Last week as well. Um. I overheard some people talking about, oh man, I wish for longer scenes. These scenes are so short. But also at the same time, I think they're trying to keep the pace going. You know, they're trying to make it seem exciting. Like there's a lot of movement happening at one time because there is. I like it. I'm looking forward to Ma to show up. Ma's just got to log right into this thing. We can talk about it all. Spixie. Spixie on Monday and Tuesday. Hey, Pasolini. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Sandra. <coughs> Leanne. Uh, I mean, Elizabeth and Finn had an excellent week. Uh, Jagger, of course, surprised us all at the end of it all on Friday. Um, you know, lots of new stuff happening. This is, this is, uh, I think, Thursday or Friday was the first day of the new era, the Mulcorte era, officially underway, as they are now credited as the writers. Where is Trina? Asks Leanne, Trina is taking a break. Now, I don't know what, what Sydney, uh, what, uh, I'm sorry, Sydney McKayla, my goodness, that's the old one. I don't know what Tabiana Lee is up to. I don't know if she's on a planned break, a vacation, or if she's just enjoying the time in which her character isn't being featured. Uh, but as it stands right now, we're not really exploring any of, of, of Trina's perspective or where she's at in her life, uh, because we pretty much have full focus of the show going on when it comes to the Jason return and, and sort of everything that's surrounding that. I know what, you know, uh, at the same time we have TJ talking to Jordan about the baby. We have scenes between Alex, uh, between Christina and Blaze. Uh, I recognize there's still things happening in the quarter main house, but nothing from Trina. Last time we heard from Trina, I think she said she was, she was, she was stepping back. She was taking some time to collect herself. And when it comes down to it, that's just what you can assume she's doing. Flipping through art pages, maybe going through some through some books, working at the gallery, and just getting her mind back right. 
for her to step back in front of the cameras again and move forward with that, whatever next story there is for her, which could be any number of things now that we're looking down a brand new writing team. Everything that they set up for Trina is entirely uh, possible. It's been swept off the table. There could have been nothing set up for Trina, and now Corte and Mulcahy are making plans. Or not. I really can't say. Um, but where is Trina? Well, the symbol show. With the symbol answer that the show has given us is she's chilling, taking a step back from most of her responsibilities to move forward in her life. Jeannie says Tabby's enjoying her break. She probably is. We have to keep in mind that these really are human beings, and in order to produce the show, even though we only see 37 minutes of it a day, these people are on set for hours upon hours upon hours. Um, I know that uh, we just had Remington Hoffman on from Days of Our Lives on this channel not too long ago, and he said, it's nice because it's as close to a full-time job as you're going to get when it comes to being an actor, when it comes to the 9 to 5 life. But 9 to 5 is a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, these days lasts a long time. And so when you've been heavily featured like she has been, multiple days a week, big Greenland opportunity, lots of scenes with Spencer and Esme, big boat, you know, action sequence and all that kind of stuff that takes a lot of time, takes a lot of energy. And I wouldn't be surprised if she was just enjoying a couple of weeks of not having to do stuff. But I don't know her personally, I can't say. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, Carolyn says, hi from New Jersey. A from California, Carolyn. Hit that thumbs up, says Kelly. Thank you so much, Kelly. I appreciate that. Everybody, yeah, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We're just killing time waiting for Mama to show up. <laughs> she said she was booting her computer, and I guess it's just taking forever. Uh, well, the last two weeks were only like a day, so, says Michelle. Trina's only been off screen for like a day of her life, and that's also very important as well. Um, not a whole lot of time has passed when it comes down to it. Any sort of development that's come up has been completely, really tied into the whole Jason is returning situation. Even Lexus wanting to return to law has been tied into the Jason situation. Um, so unless we feel as though Trina's grief needs to be tied into Jason's return, we're probably just not going to see her very much. Uh, let's see, Lisa, excuse me, Leanne also says, and that doesn't account for the hours prepping and reading scripts, which is a big part of their day as well. You know, they, they meet with each other in their dressing rooms and they go over their scripts and they, they run lines and they rehearse a little bit because they really only have one shot at doing it. And I don't know if you have any experience, uh, listeners, uh, doing any sort of, uh, performing in front of an audience, but it, or even performing just period, technically it's in front of the audience. If you consider the camera, the audience. In any case, it takes a whole heck of a lot of energy. It leaves you mentally and physically drained. Even me, I have to take like an hour after the podcast of not just talking to anybody afterward just because it, it, it does take drive, focus, mental fortitude, and energy. And so it, it's it's pretty draining. So awesome for her if she's, you know, taking some time, enjoying herself as the show focuses on other areas of this ensemble cast. Link says, I saw Patrick's name as a writer on Friday. Let's go GH. And that's absolutely right. As I said a little bit earlier, the Mulcahy era has started. Chris and Dan are no, long, no longer credited as the head writers of General Hospital, as we are now recognizing the new ones. From my limited understanding, from my minor plugged in nature that I have from being on this podcast, I have seen that, uh, you know, any number of percentages have been thrown out as to what it is that the new writers were in control of versus what they were continuing on with uh, with the old writers. Anywhere from 50%, 80% of, of, of the content is new. Um, when it comes to the direction of the stories, I really can't say anything other than the Jason return has been any massively different than what Chris and Dan might have planned out. But the content within is where the quality lies, folks. It is the, the the actual lines, the words that these characters are saying, the little elements of history, the little characterization points that they put in, like um, 
when Jocelyn was talking to Nina, and Nina was worried that Sonny had read the newspaper and saw the article about Diane in there, or about him, or about, yeah, about him in there. And Jocelyn goes, hey, uh, I don't know, Dex, have you ever seen Sonny read a newspaper? That sort of stuff. Those little bits of character, those little bits of just nuanced minor detail really change a lot, makes it feel much more real makes these relationships seem much more informed and natural and logical. And I've really been enjoying the content of the lines that have been coming out of the characters' mouths. Uh, Michelle says, I used to do extra work. We used to call it hurry up and wait work. Well, then you know. You sit around and you wait. Waiting can also be pretty draining, mentally draining. And then you hurry, 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 hurry. You work very hard in uh, spurts of time. It's like a sprint, a bunch of sprints throughout the day. And by the time you're done, you are spent. Hello from the cloudy Gulf Coast. Hey, Annette. Hello from California, Los Angeles. Happy Sunday, says Rochelle. Thumbs up to everyone, says Sandra. Thank you, Sandra, for helping everybody. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. While we're continuing to wait for my mom to show up, no updates from her yet, but that's all right. She'll be here eventually. <laughs> um, but if it, you know, if it wasn't for her, um, anyway, uh, we're waiting on her. Uh, <laughs> I live from the cloudy Gulf Coast. I'm upset Molly doesn't have her own baby. Oh, I'm sorry, Annette. I don't know what to say on that one. Uh, maybe Christina will, uh, Blink says, maybe Christina will now go back to being four weeks pregnant. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. I think that that 14 weeks was because the new writers decided when Christina is going to be having her baby here in the in the uh, the calendar year in the upcoming months. And so we decided 14 weeks, three months or so, two months, three months, four, eight, twelve. So a little bit over three months in her second trimester, getting ready to wear that belly here any moment. She's um. I think I think they just decided when, like if this is going to be an August baby or something like that. And so that's why they decided 14. Matt, remind mom when she gets here that Maxie is, is in the same Goodwill sweater. I'm sure she noticed. There's no way that she didn't notice, everybody. There's no way. I've read rumors that Molly dies. Um, Here's the thing. I don't think that there is enough finalized plans released or leaked out there to the world yet for us to know exactly who may or may not be dying. I think that we are going to see a bit of a cast shift, not in that, oh, we don't like you or um, we don't see any value in your character, just in the directions that the new writers have in mind with where they want to see these characters might be by the end of the year or the stories that they might be involved in by the end of the year. Um, I think that we're starting to see that a little bit with Marshall. I think that we are, we are racing to the end of the story that Chris and Dan started when it came to his misdiagnosis because his psychologist is dead kevin has given him all the answers tell him exactly why and as um understood this week as pointed out to uh to, to me by followers on twitter um robert gossett looks like he is now off contract and is now a recurring character rather than a contracted star on general hospital so uh, we'll see where that goes. It, it looks like the writing on the wall seems as though it looks like marshall may or may not be on his way out Going down to recurring doesn't mean you're on your way out. Lois went down to recurring, and she's fine. She's still on the show. Um, uh, Valentine, he's always been recurring. Um, Ned, he's recurring. So I don't think any sort of like Robert Gossett uh, demotion is necessarily indicative of him leaving the show entirely. But hey, Mother's here. I I finally got off the you elevator. Got it. Look at that. We got grandpa's thumb. We got some grandkids in the back. Oh, finally. Finally. Fine. Hi, Ellie. Hell yeah, I was about to give up. How's it going, Ellie? Oh, Hi. thank you, baby. Thank Look you, there. IT guy on public line. Well, Thanks, the, IT guy on public line. <laughs> yeah. But, the, oh, yeah, the IT guy. Thank you, the, gr grandma dad, grandpa dad, or whatever his name is. <laughs> <laughs> For the help is it all right guys you have to go find something to do go watch a movie over there or whatever else okay you have to get along <laughs> baby <laughs> well i was just hanging out with the chat ma we were killing time hey. waiting for you to show up well i was about to give up i appreciate you I'm I not... I, you know what 
Xfinity is janky. Oh, it was an internet problem. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was like, okay, I'm going to continue to do this for like another ten minutes before I text Angela. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was starting to eat. <sighs> I don't know. It's been slow and weird the last three or four days. It's been, but but was it recently stormy? Uh, a couple weeks not, ago. Not no, enough, you not, know what? Not within enough time for this to to affect it. I tell you what, there's been some fools out in front of in front of the the neighborhood in the street fooling around doing stuff. Mm. You know, with cable and stuff. So and, and, okay, so there's some crews yeah. working in the area. I think there's some crews working in the area. And uh, I think they're messing it up. Got it. They're not making it better. Got evidently. it. Got and it. Currently, they're not making it better. Got it. Okay. Well, welcome. I'm glad that you made it. The chat is excited <sighs> to see you. I'm a little stressed out, but I'm here. No, it's all right. You relax. Goose, goose schwaba or whatever from that anger management movie. Did you see the, it was at Adam Sandler, I think, and um, Jack, Jack Nicholson. We're in this movie called Anger Management, in which Jack Nicholson. I do remember that movie. Yeah. I should rewatch that. It, actually, I thought it was kind of funny. I feel like it might have been Jack Nicholson's last like great comedy, you know, or like good comedy. Uh, like, he doesn't retired. do much anymore, so. No, he retired. Yeah, yeah. Jack Nicholson retired. I think from I, acting. what was it? Was it he Departed? Does show might up have been like his. Occasionally. I think the Departed might have been his final movie. Probably. Or at least the final one with any nor notoriety. Anyway, yeah. uh, Kelly says the IT guy, a.k.a. Matt's dad, fixed Mama's Internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it's, been, it's, it's been, like I said, it's been terrible. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, so, you know, Stephanie says hi. Kelly, of course, says hello. We got a full chat here. I'm sure more is going to pop up now that you're here. You're far more popular than I am. Oh, my goodness. It's not true. Um <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good no. morning. Good afternoon. Did you see the human worm squirming behind you? I, I see. I, I, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> there's a little worm. There's a little worm back there. I saw her. Eagle-eyed viewers. Okay. <laughs> Eagle-eyed viewers. Uh, anyway, so we, we were talking about stuff. We were talking about, actually, we were talking about Robert Gossett when you were logging in. Yeah. Because he's, okay. he, he's off contract. He's now recurring. Oh, okay. And then also they, they clearly have accelerated his uh, misdiagnosis storyline to the end. And so the speculation is, is, is Marshall on his way out? Or are we just moving in a different direction when it comes to the Ashford family? Well, I, 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 I kind of hope not. I hope, I hope Robert's not going to be off the show. I, I like, you know, I like Marshall. I like Marshall uh, too. Yeah, yeah, I don't, anyway. I don't, I hope, I hope, you know, going to recreate, doesn't mean you're off the show, it just means you're not no. guaranteed a certain amount of episodes, yeah, I mean, right? You just don't have guarantee, you know, it just means right. we're going to use you when, when there's room, when it makes sense, when the, when the, when it supports mm -hmm. it, when the schedule matches, uh, but that doesn't, Honestly, like, I was going over the list, you know, Valentine's, he, he's, he's recurring, um, um, uh, Ned, he's recurring, mm -hmm. um, and um, shoot, somebody else. Oh, Lois. Lois was on contract, and now she's recurring, and clearly she's not going anywhere. So that doesn't mean that you're going anywhere. It just means your guarantee is gone. Yeah, and so, there's a lot of recurring people on there, not just oh, those. There's a mess ton of recurring. A mess, right? Yeah, I'm more sure recurring than not. I would imagine there's more recurring actors on the show than contracted ones. Um, the contracted so. ones would be like Nina and Carly, Sunny. Um, I can't even say Olivia is. I don't know, you know, because she's no, she's she's so. on regularly, but she's not always on, right? You know, so yeah. I can't even say. Um, I'm sure Tabiana's uh, contract, right? Oh, a thousand percent. And that's another actor that was brought up because the big question is, hey, where's Trina right now? And the answer is uh, hanging out in the uh, in her room, uh, collecting herself, as the show focuses on Jason. Yeah, um, and then uh, we had somebody point out in the chat as well that really over the last two weeks of GH, only like a day has passed. It was like a night into the morning. Yes. And so really yes. like the timeline of events inside General Hospital while taking 10 of our days yes. is not a big stretch of time for them. So mm -hmm. really wherever Trina was mentally two weeks ago is pretty much where she's going to be now because only eight hours has passed. 
Right. And that's something that's kind of hard to digest when you're watching the show because so much of our time passes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I get it. I, yeah. get, I get the want and the desire. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, it's a TV show with other, with, with other characters. And, and, we, and we all know that the cast is a little fat. It's a little fat. And um, if, you know, if, 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 don't come here for the news, folks, I don't know. But if the quick wrap up, wrap up of the misdiagnosis and the off contract status of Robert Gossett is a suggestion that maybe that actor is leaving, then it's entirely possible that we might see more exits that follow. Followed by entries of new characters, because as of Thursday or Friday this week, we have the new head writers as being credited. Yes. So it is now 100%, 100% in their hands. Every aspect of the show that you see now has been planned, developed, written, approved, and all of that by the new creative regime of General right. Hospital. And it's not just the writers. It's also ABC itself. Mm -hmm. From my understanding, my limited understanding, Michael Fairman will probably know way more about this than I do. <laughs> but... Uh, from my understanding, Nathan Varney, who is the ABC executive, okay, for that oversees like the Connors and and General Hospital, and is just like the network liaison mm -hmm. uh, for those shows, apparently is now folded a little bit more into the fabric of General Hospital when it comes to the creative inspiration of stories. That doesn't mean he's calling the shots. That doesn't mean he's the, the ground zero of ideas. But the network getting wind of what the plans of GHR seem to be a little bit earlier in the process mm -hmm. now, which means that it opens up all kinds of opportunities for new things to be explored, new investments from ABC because they're getting involved a little earlier. You know, it's 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 just a wide open door of exciting new possibilities. I... It, is. it is. They're not wearing green, mother. What? Are they wearing green? The kids? Yeah. They chose not to. Oh, did you pinch them? Not yet. I, I, I want to pinch their heads off if they don't stop biting. Oh, well, hey, kids, get along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We need to be responsible like Danny and Jake. <laughs> uh, well, about the, about the you know, head, mm -hmm. head writer thing. You know, there's, of course, if you're going to have a whole, uh, you know, uh, Pretty much a shakeup, right? A writing shakeup. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's gonna it's it's not gonna feel or look the same. There's gonna be some changes. Yeah, yeah. So brand new head writers, you know, brand new ideas, brand new thoughts on the characters. And when it comes down to it, you know, Elizabeth Corte, she's been a writer on General Hospital for 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know, she's seen as as a high ranking historian. And then yes. um, I think that, that the, the con contributions like this, and I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier before you popped on, was mm -hmm. Jocelyn's line about Sonny reading newspapers. <laughs> where she's like, Dex, have you ever seen him read? No, 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 I think he gets his news from other sources. You know, like people tell him the news essentially is, is what he was talking about. <laughs> um, and the, the, just those little tiny little characterizations. Those little aspects of tiny things, little specks touches upon. Get the door, babies. Okay, love. Touches upon uh, old things because apparently, I don't know if you knew this, Ma, but apparently, mm -hmm. Sonny Corinthos reads at an eighth grade level. He's not the most educated man out there. Yeah. And if it's been a part of the show, apparently it's been said, specifically stated, worked into storylines that he's not illiterate, but he is not the strongest reader. Okay. And I, I don't recall that. He doesn't. I don't know. Listen, they covered a lot of ground in the last 25, <laughs> 30 years, right? Yeah. Um. So, so by just baking in just that tiny little thing, not only did it create a fun little, just fun, light moment uh, for them to play off of together. Uh, it's also kind of rooted in a little bit of like deep characterization that we haven't had over the mm -hmm. last couple of years, really. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. I like it. I like it. I was nerding out over it. I thought it was neat. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be, you know, Elizabeth Cortez influence, just knowing these characters so well. Sure. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I guess I guess this Patrick Mulcahy guy is just almost a legend in his own right, if not a legend. 
in soap yeah, creation. Yeah, it's been a soap writer for, for forever, right? Yeah, and so they were saying, I was, I was seeing on Twitter, because Twitter's been a much nicer place <laughs> for Lately? now. Oh, good. For now. We'll see. <laughs> um. But uh, they uh, they were they were talking about how uh, Mulcahy is 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 really good at coming up with excuses for villainy, like soapy excuses for villainy, like I'm being poisoned by my hip replacement. All right, you guys, let <laughs> me tell you a little bit about that, okay? Because I have a little bit experience with that, mm -hmm. okay? So you know, um, Daddy T um, has an artificial hip. Mm. Okay. No. And they did a blood test on Kidding. him. Yeah. They did. A, he's had an artificial hip for a long time since. <laughs> yeah, I know. Since his forties. <laughs> I remember. So, it. Yeah. So um, he, uh, they did a blood test on him a few years later, routine blood test, and they found high levels of metals in his blood. Mm -hmm. So they were afraid that his hip was leaching mm -hmm. and poisoning his blood. Mm -hmm. It turned out it wasn't. Well, that's However. Good. However, that is a real thing. Now, I don't know if it makes you crazy and help people or not. <laughs> but there is such thing as, a, as, as metals leaching off of the artificial hip, and it can be a problem. Yes. Yes. Does that... So that's not a, that's not a made-up thing that doesn't happen. No, but apparently... Metal leaching Heather does happen it's from me. artificial mm -hmm. hip situations. And it's making Heather weather crazy. And it is again, making Twitter Heather, was there. Twitter was there to support uh, Mulcahy's knowledge of history, I guess, um, because they were like, really, like she was loony before, but she wasn't a killer until 2011. Exactly what Laura was saying is true. Mm -hmm. and she was crazy before. And she would do crazy she tried things. To LSD somebody, but wound up taking that herself. Like she and she all, you know, well, this was the scenario that, they, and I'm sure you guys in the chat, a lot of you remember this. Heather stole Danny, didn't he? Or tried to switch him with another baby or something mm -hmm. because she was for for the last one of the last times that she had a large presence on General Hospital. She was after Luke. Mm. She was obsessed with Luke, right? And doing crazy things. Well, who wouldn't? But be? she, but she really wasn't murderous. Not really. No, she was Not just loony. Really, really. Did she do things that could cause people to possibly die back then? Yes, she did. Did but, she hook people? No. no. No, but she wasn't a serial killer, like 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 Laura what, said. Exactly. You know, she she did some stuff, but she wasn't a serial killer. Right. So I think they're laying the groundwork for Heather to get out of jail. Yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, people are like, oh, redemption, redemption. How could they? I don't see. You know, just because you have a reason for why you're bad doesn't mean that you're redeemed. Uh, you know, and it doesn't mean that you're going to get out and be good. Yeah, you know, you could still cause a bunch of problems. Like she, she could. Like I, I don't know what sort of splash or impact she could have beyond, you know, Laura and Kevin at the moment because she really doesn't. She, she doesn't have Franco. She doesn't have Esme. She doesn't have Ryan. She doesn't have ties to mm -hmm. the cameras right now beyond Ace. So right. I don't. I don't really know what any sort of long term plans would be with a minorly less crazy Heather. What they said about her, the closest thing she has to having a relative is Laura is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, it's just, I don't know. I don't because know, I don't she know used to, she used to, Heather was married to Jeff. She was. That's mm -hmm. why she gets a Weber. Right. So she was married to Jeff. Rick is, is Laura's dad, her adoptive dad. Mm -hmm. but Rick is, Rick Weber is Laura's adopted dad. Jeff is her uncle. Once upon a time, Heather was her aunt. Yes. Yes. Long decades ago. Mm -hmm. decades Heather ago. tried to jump off the edge of a building with Danny, says Este. So there's that. PJ yeah, switched she... the glasses of LSD iced tea. Uh, so she got it, not Diana Taylor. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, she... She was a goofy foil, like like um, what is it? Days of Our Lives, Susan. Yeah. You know, just kind of kind of, kind of goofy. Elvis. <laughs> Elvis. Oh, Elvis. I figured it all out, Elvis. We're gonna be all right, Elvis. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, I uh, think they're lay they're laying the groundwork work. I think for Heather to get released from prison, I'm all for it because I find her so entertaining. Yes. I like it. I mean, Allie yeah, Mills yeah. is just a star and a half, isn't she? I mean. Uh, 
even so we got Heather, right? And then remember the Emmys? Remember Allie Mills at the Emmys with just those ass kicking boots? Yes. Just 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 looking like I I don't know, man, because because, you know, she she she's she's Kevin Arnold's mom. You I know. know. <laughs> you know, like you, you just when it came to when it came, you know, she she was uh, that that character. I don't even remember her name on the show. She was Mrs. Arnold. But um, um, I remember the character though was was a a a housewife in the '60s who was striving so hard for independence and her own self and her own sense of belonging and not just being that '50s housewife because it was it was a show about you know cultural movement and growth and character arc and and those are the things that I remember about Kevin Arnold's mom, which is not Heather Weber, and not Allie Mills. No. And so it just, it's just fascinating, uh, just the fascinating talent of this Emmy winner. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My general hospital really is just so great. I've enjoyed it very much. Like, even, even the other podcasters are loving it. That's good. I know. Isn't it great? That's good. You know, just a bunch of love for general hospital. Oh, man. What's the <laughs> chat saying about all this stuff, Ma? What do you think they're saying? Either they're talking about something completely different, <laughs> or or perhaps disagreeing with us. I don't know. I uh, know they they rarely disagree with us. Um, Leanne says that she's worried Heather's going to steal Ace. Ace has oh, already I been stolen, folks. Stolen. We don't need him stolen much much of other times. Uh, okay. And it says yes, the old Heather and I loved her. Anything Scotty and Tracy for me. So, you know, just a lot of love for, for yesteryear with older characters from the 80s and 90s uh, from Annette. Yes. Oh, goodness. I guess Heather and Scotty used to be very in love. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Maybe Scotty's just going to have nothing but women around him. And, Ma, here's the thing. Without, without Chris and Dan, without Chris and Dan, and now with Mulcahy, who is more plugged into the yesteryear of General Hospital, mm -hmm. with Corte, who is the historian, Mm -hmm. We might be losing ambulance chaser Scotty and might be gaining one that has a little more, I don't know, scruples. Or at least a little more impact. Is it a more, a, well, maybe a little more layers? Layers, have, yeah. Instead, just always trying to body. get on there, you know? Yeah. Well, that'd be good. And I think that'd make Ken very happy too. He would be very happy. And it's not like Ken Trainer isn't a multi talented, decades long super stud of soap acting you know sure. just because he's a little eccentric now doesn't mean that he couldn't do it he probably could oh, oh yeah of course they can just crying they can. you know i just you know like what if what if there's another what if the what if what if i don't know a family member out there serena comes back do do he and lucy have a kid no no okay okay i don't, I don't know does lucy no. have kids no, Serena is his kid with her. Oh, okay. See, I don't. I uh, good. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe then it's perfect for her to come back then, because she's not dead. Mm -hmm. Recast Serena, everybody. Bring her on back. Of course, that's not her bio mother. Oh, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> Wait, then who's her? Who <laughs> it goes without parents? saying, doesn't it? <laughs> who's her, who's her actual parents then? Huh? Who's who's her actual parents then? I, I think. Uh, I think. Uh, 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 oh. Cody's mama. What's up? Oh, I see. Listen, I don't know. What the heck was her name, you guys? Shoot, I it, it, it help us out, chat. Uh, but I know you're talking about uh, what, what's his, what's his name and what's her name and those two people, Dominique. Yes, Dominique. Dominique Stanton. Dominique. So, oh, got it. Oh, okay. That's, that's, okay. That, yes, yes. That's why Scotty originally had a problem with Cody when he first came into town is because of the connection to Serena. Yes. 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 What are you doing here? What are you after? I don't trust you. You're lying. You're after something. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Yeah. I don't know. My, so, you know, if, if Marshall's on the way, I, I worry for people like Cody. But then also at the same time, Cody's like standing really close to Olivia in the preview pictures. And I just don't know what the future is. Oh, I, I don't I don't know either because they're, you know, obviously things are are changing. Mm -hmm. Obviously things are changing. Uh, yeah, I think I think we are going to see um, a little handful of characters 
not be on the show anymore. So we're, we, we're and heading... I think we're going to see a handful of characters, uh, new characters arrive. Uh, yeah, I really, I, I don't know. When it comes to that, I don't know. It depends on plans and availability and willing to recast and, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, goodness, it's such an exciting thing to think about. Um, there's a couple of options, you know. Um, there could be some sort of sudden natural disaster. Maybe a number of characters will find a reason to leave town. Maybe a number of characters will find themselves so embroiled in what's happening here with Jason's return that they wind up arrested and taken away forever. Or... Finn was just on the phone with a fellow doctor who was dealing with a disease outbreak. Could yeah. this outbreak find its way to Port Charles? It could. It could. It's been a while since they've had a toxic sphere. Well, it's, a, it's been a long time since they've had like a city-spanning hospital story. And because it's, I, I personally feel, it's because it's hard to do that without it being some sort of mass illness. Mm -hmm. And mass illnesses for you know, a, a good long time, uh, have been fairly uncomfortable, but it's been a good solid year since COVID has taken over our headlines. And so maybe it's time for an acephalocytis or a something. Something? Pox. I don't know. <laughs> you know, something. 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 Dominique, 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 yep, Dominique. Yep, Dominique. Dominique, Dominique. Dominique, thank you very much, Chad, for Dominique making sure that we knew. Dominique was so beautiful. She had the most beautiful long hair. Oh, did she? Yeah, Dominique was very pretty. I'm going to look up a picture right now, then. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. Yep. Dominique, don't, Dominique, stand oh, I knew boy. a dude named Dominique once. Yeah, he did. I did. did I did. Huh? I did. He was a good guy. Good guy. Enjoyable. Join the Navy. Yep. I remember him. Mm-hmm. He's tall and good looking, too. So tall. My goodness. He was like 6'3", Ma. Uh -huh. If not more. He's tall and good looking guy, too. She did have really long hair. Just long, like chestnut. Yes. Healthy, shiny, like Gagne Fructis commercial. I'm going to... Ri <laughs> yes. Remember, remember yes. the... We're, we're, I don't know how old this commercial is anymore. It's got to be at least 20 years where the model who's not like Cindy Crawford but kind of resembles her walks up and she's hot and sweaty and like orders a drink and then one of her friends runs up and ties her hair to the bar post and as she turns to leave she just rips it off and it doesn't hurt her hair at all because it's so strong and healthy. I remember that, that silly old commercial. Yes. That is Dominique's hair. This is Dominique's hair. I told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> ah, oh my gosh. Dominique is Serena's mom. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, yep. Morgan will come back, Annette wants. Annette, Morgan will come back and claim Avery. Apparently, Annette thinks that Morgan is Avery's dad and not Sonny. Could be. I don't, I don't know if the, it could be. Does it, I guess the timeline sinks because Morgan died and then Sonny immediately got in there. Pretty much. <laughs> See, any number could of be. things is possible. Can Could you imagine? I, well, I've seen all over social media. I've seen all over social media that Morgan's coming back. Well, his show got canceled is the thing. I know. The thing that it's was so keeping special, the right? actor, supposedly keeping the actor away. Uh, his show Good Trouble is no longer on, which actually my, the dude across the hall, he was on that show. He was an extra on it. Anyway, uh, so done, gone, that show's over. And so, you know, I guess technically the actor might be available. Is he interested? Does he have other jobs pro uh, lined up? Does GH have an interest in Morgan? I don't have the answer to these questions. I think it would be kind of cool for him to come back. Do I have an interest in Morgan? Not really. But I don't know Morgan. You didn't watch him, you know, huh? I didn't watch him at all. I just kind of know his face. And I'm like, really, that guy, huh? Just because he, just in my mind's eye of a Morgan, did not match the actor. And it's oh, not, really? Not, not a hateful statement or anything like that. It's not like he's ugly or doesn't fit or anything. It's just, just I just didn't picture him. You know, I just didn't well, picture sure, everybody has a mind's eye of what a character you know, looks pictured, like I pictured, if you've not um, seen him. Yeah, I understand that the Corinthos TNA is very strong, but I didn't expect it to, to I didn't think that Morgan given him his status for so long as being the only kid between Sonny and Carly, I figured they would pick an actor that resembled a blend of them a little bit more. Well, if you would, if you see him on screen, you will see a little more blend than what you are currently when uh -huh. you actually, you know, see him as Morgan, because yes, he has like, he has some dark features like Sonny, mm -hmm. 
but he has an elongated face, mm-hmm. like like Carly, and he has blue eyes. Oh, he has okay. light eyes. Okay, I don't, I, I can't recall. Morgan has light eyes, but um, dark, dark hair. hair. And a little okay. bit of a color tone to his skin, a little well, bit. Well, if if this actor, I don't know his name, but if he's on his way back, if Morgan's on his way back, cool. Um, I have seen a lot of speculation, like you said, online. Um, I've also heard some rumblings from my sources in the background that Morgan's name has come up a couple of times. Uh, whether or not that's going to lead into any result, I don't know. But but it goes to show that the series has not forgotten about the character. Right. So who knows? Who knows what the future is? I let me tell you, folks, I don't know, okay? I certainly don't <laughs> I know. want everybody to make sure, you know, because, you know, people on Twitter or social media and stuff, they'll, they'll, they'll make up whatever it is they think is, is, is true about somebody that's, that, that puts themselves out on YouTube to talk about General Hospital. Protecting access and kissing butts of shows to make sure that they like us and all that. <laughs> Listen, folks, yeah. if we were playing the game like that, we would have a guest every three weeks. If we were plugged in, if we had access, yeah, we, we, we would have Robert Gossett on here because we would have John Lindstrom on here. You know, we would have these actors that we love to talk about to talk to. So don't get it twisted. We don't know schnit. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brian, we just speculate with you guys. Brian Craig is the guy's name. Yep, Brian. Yes. Daisy I, thinks I, that Morgan is dead, dead. There's no way Morgan I, is dead, know, dead. I, I don't believe that anybody's dead on General Hospital, especially if they don't show a body bag. It's just, they're just dead. And even then, even then, they could have buried guns. Yeah. Like in Terminator 3. (laughs) You just put soap operas. And, and, you know, and since since this new writing team is so retrospective and likes to go back, you know, and... I wouldn't be a bit surprised. There's I so much. A There's bit surprised. Just in this little brief thing, we've seen so much reaching into the back. Okay, we've got a little bit of a of a of an awakening, and I want to say awakening, but we have story being informed by Jay Sam. Mm-hmm. You know, Sam's reaction to Jason's return and Dante getting shot is very tied into her history that she's had with Jason. Mm-hmm. She even said, "Like, hey, I never really stopped loving the dude. It wasn't gonna work forever." I don't want him to have shot Dante. This sucks for me. You know, like sure. The, the the you know she has some informed side of her, but also at the same time, before she would want, regardless of how she feels about him. Even she would never want Danny's father to hurt Rocco's father. Oh, absolutely not. And she doesn't want that for Jason either. You know, she doesn't want Jason to to be a a cold-blooded killer who would kill people that he loves like Dante. You know, she doesn't want that for him. She doesn't want that for her life. But also at the same time, she hasn't really changed her stance hardcore of what she told Sonny on Monday, which was, when you find out who this person is, I think you understand what I want you to do with him. Yeah. She's pretty clear about that. Yeah, yeah, get it, Sam. Get it. (laughs) (laughs) But now it's Jason. All right, and then, uh, and then, as I understand, um, um, they had, they had somebody, might have been Dex. Somebody was on Stephen Bradford's pod. Okay, I don't remember who it was, but it was somebody recent. Oh, it was Michael. It was Chad Duel. He was on there. Okay, and I guess in little laughter, haha, banter, banter, Chad said something like, "Well, maybe one day when you return to working for Sonny." So it seems as though whatever rift exists between Sonny and Jason may continue persisting through. So long as those actors weren't just being silly. I wouldn't be surprised. And I really have been surprised with how much, how quickly Sonny um, has has really, he has never second-guessed Jason like he is and has now. Mm-mm. He's really second-guessing Jason and, and thinking. He's to be loyal. Right. <laughs> He's really second guessing. He never second guessed it. Never, never second guessed mm-hmm. Jason in the past. And he also, and he also says, and he said it before, and he said it a couple times, Jason never misses. Well, then he can't be the shooter, can he? No, no, because he's missed you twice, Sonny. Exactly. Well, and I Sonny mean... says himself that Jason never misses. But he didn't miss Dante. Shot the heck out of John. Well, according to Sonny, shot the heck out of Dante. Right. Oh goodness gracious! Uh, thank you very no, much. I was Kelly. really surprised at how quickly he um, 
is second guessing Jason. You know, um, but when the, a lot of other people aren't like, well, Carly, of course. Um, and I was kind of surprised. Weren't you guys a little bit surprised that Drew, Drew dumped Carly? So quick? that's the cute. That's actually a yes or no question. Were you surprised that 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 uh, that Drew dumped Carly? Might as well just give you the answer right now. And this poll was sponsored by Kelly Publicover for her super chat contribution that she just made. And YouTube wanted me to recognize the fact that this is her fifth super chat contribution. So thank you very much, Kelly, for your thank you, Kelly. generosity. <laughs> um, <laughs> week over week. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, gosh, you're just talented children behind you, mother. Oh, those are two gymnasts right there. Just talented beyond <laughs> all belief. Uh, but 76%. Of people said, no, I'm not surprised that Drew did this. I wasn't surprised he broke up with her. I was surprised he broke up with her so quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised he broke Before up there was with even her a right chance. out the gate. Before there was even a possibility right. that Carly was going to pick somebody else over him. He's like, I'm not even going to make it hard for you. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. But everything Drew said is true, though. It's totally true. A hundred million percent Everything true. Drew said is so true. percent true. true. Yeah. Stephanie and wasn't he surprised. Said, it doesn't mean that you didn't love Sonny. Doesn't mean that you didn't love Jax. D d doesn't mean that. Mm -mm. It means that. And what he said is true. It's just Jason is number one. Mm -hmm. But we know, we know just from what we've seen just this week, Jason got a whole hassle of um, secrets. He got a lot going on over the last couple of years. He's had a lot going on the past couple of years. Even Michael's like, where'd you get that ink? I, I know I was, I, I, I was really, really, really wondering, you know, what, what was General Hospital going to do about this tattoo? I mean, it's, um, it's not a big deal. I mean, I know I, I see a lot of people online saying, who cares, who cares, who cares? Well, no, we don't. Not but really. it's such a big piece that you can't ignore it. Exactly. It's such a big piece. It's not it, like getting a little it, symbol in your forearm well, or something a, on your a, shoulder. A sleeve, this is almost right? a sleeve. It's a sleeve. So they can't leave him with his jacket on till the end of time. No. And it's just too big and distracting not to say nothing. Well, it goes down into his forearm, too. So even when he's wearing his black shirt, you're going to be able to see some of it. Yes. Yes. If he has a black T-shirt on, you're going to see. And when he has his arm up like this, mm -hmm. he has his arm up like this, the whole, I believe it's the back. I believe it's the back, but it's it's but risky, it's mom. A, it's super risky. It is a risky decision to make as an actor, and it, it's it's indicative to Steve Burton, in my opinion, settling, 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 settling into General Hospital with nothing else in his sights. Movies, TV, uh, you know, short run series special events not in his mind and here's why name modern day not not danny trejo from 20 years ago not that guy who played manny on general hospital but an, uh, an actor that's come around today that is loaded with tats yeah, not a lot of people no huh? and it's because uh, tattoo artists have positioned themselves to wanting a cut of royalty for their art being on television. Oh. And so in order to avoid any, all of that artistic ownership hullabaloo, no tattoos. Oh, if you have one, it's got to be covered by clothing or by makeup. If you can. You can't cover Steve Burton's. No, it's too... So, it's, it's, so basically I mean, it limits... Could. The whole point is it limits could, his... but it would take forever every it day. Forever. It limits his other options options and opportunities outside of general hospital which knows and sees the value of steve burton what's going on back there with the kids uh they don't listen oh. good hmm. <laughs> i see i see you guys shut the door <laughs> oh gosh it's good it's getting the it's, you know what it is it's it's they're getting old enough to not listen you better believe they're getting old. They're enough. getting old enough to not listen. Oh, there, there goes Grandpa to go set it to go to go slam that door and say, "Listen up, kids, listen up." All right, it's me, <laughs> Grandpa. 
<laughs> you lay down the wall. You sit and you watch these cartoons. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. It's just a house full of family is what it is. But why, why are they there? Is it because you guys are doing a St. Patrick's event? Um. Yeah, we we we're doing a St. Patrick's thing. I got corned beef going in the in the crock pot oh, already. Nice, nice, nice. Maybe oh gosh, they probably don't have corned beef in that at the grocery store anymore, do they? I bet they do. Maybe I'll rush over and see if they got any. I bet they got plenty. I gotta check it out, and see what's going on. Maybe maybe I should throw some in the uh, in the crock pot when I'm done. That's what I did. I just threw it. I threw it in there real quick. I have to add the other stuff to it later. But I threw like uh, the the corned beef itself. A little chicken broth and a bunch of onion ring, you know, onions in there, and started it. <laughs> Deep fried onion I, rings. Well, I left it in <laughs> onion rings, but they're not breaded onion rings. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. So, 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 I was just wondering what they would do about the tattoo. It looks like they're going to address the tra- tattoo to some degree because yeah, it did maybe have a long. he might have a long story associated. I got it because I needed to prove to these guys that we did it to protect the person from the RICO charges, whoever this person may be. Yeah, so I, it's either... I was just really curious what they would do. You know, I I mm-hmm. thought that, you know it was I was kind of like a fifty fifty. They're going to either address it and make it part of story somehow, or they're going to just pretend they're blind. Well, they're not pretending they're blind. Exist. Looks like they're folding it into the story itself. Well, uh, <laughs> and I think you're, I think you're right though, Matt. I think, you know, I think Steve Burton went through a, a lot, especially, you know, around the time that he left GH mm-hmm. and it wasn't, but maybe three or four months before that, 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 that he had left GH, that, that it was, it was known um, to all of us that he and Cherie were getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. And that they had, you know, and and it was public that she was pregnant and it wasn't his baby. And we don't know what, how that happened. You know, they split up for a solid year before that we ever found out about anything. Mm-hmm. Maybe they hadn't been living in the same home for a year. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Or maybe she was slipping on her husband. <laughs> Who knows? Who we don't know. Knows? Honestly, honestly, when it comes right down to it, our business. Not really. Not really, uh, but yeah, it's, it's just, just it's, like just like any kind of garbage I got going on in my life. Well, Steve Burton don't need to know about that either. It's like it's like Steve Burton is. I don't know this man. I've never had a conversation with him. Don't take this as if he's really feeling this. This is just my reaction. Um, he uh, it's it's like he 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 recognizes that General Hospital is home. I think <laughs> feels he, like he's home there. I, I think he always felt that way. I don't think he ever wanted to leave, but I think he wanted to stand on his principles and you know and just what he believed. On me like my wife. You know, and I think I think he wanted, you know, he how he felt about the shot is the way he felt about the shot. Yeah. And you know, he waited and he said from the very get go that you know, if the if 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 policy has ever changed and I'm I right can back. come home, I'm I right want to come home. Yeah, and he, they did. He and said they, that from the beginning, very beginning. Well, we said from the moment they said T. Burton is no longer on the show that we're like, we're just waiting for COVID to be over. He'll be right back. We've been saying it from the beginning. All, it's not a surprise to anybody. All Disney, all Disney's policies just had to change, and they did. Uh, Leanne wonders what the reaction will be when he finds out about Brit and Epiphany. we got to spread it out. We can't just tell him everybody's dead. <laughs> I know. They already told him Bobby's dead. Mm-hmm. That broke his heart. He got two reactions to that. He did. He got, he got it with Carly and he got it with Michael, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, wait till he finds out Epiphany's gone. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, Blink thinks that whoever Stone is has Morgan. I think Stone and Morgan could be the same. The same person. person. I don't know, because there's a whole big question now hanging over the head of one John Jagger Gates. Mm-hmm. Uh, is he has been as honest as um, it would seem? Does he have deep secrets beyond what it is that we know? Or is all of this stuff genuinely what he was talking about? Fighting bad guys, cap- capturing people, bringing them to justice, and using a new tool along the way. It wouldn't but be- he knew Jason was alive. Yes, but that doesn't necessarily make him a bad guy. Here's the, here's the big issue, Ma. Who, who if, if this wasn't General Hospital, 
if General Hospital had been following the heart and the life of Sonny Corinthos as it had for the last 20 years, who would be the good guy and who would be the bad guy? Sonny would be the bad guy and the cop would be the good guy. The only reason Jagger is considered potentially villainous is because he's going after Sonny. Now, here's the thing, though. People are getting shot. He is, he is executing folks. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it was... Jason didn't shoot Olivia Jerome because he just came to town. There's too many angles. I don't know what's going on. I don't know either. You know, there there's a lot of stuff that's actually, you know, there's there's stuff that that we don't know that that are going to be revealed. We don't, you know, we still don't know who point blank shot Frank, um, Frank, uh, uh, Austin. Austin. No, Austin was all tied into criminality. Austin. Is this all connected? Was that Jagger's first person that they took out was Austin because he had just gotten off the witness stand that released Cyrus from prison. He just did something mafia, organized crime related. Yeah. So was you know, he I the loved first? On Friday, I loved on Friday when when Sonny was exiting and passed by um, John. Uh -huh. He's like Jagger, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Jagger. Oh, There's no God. way Sonny's ever. I don't care if the rest of the cast they decide the rest of the cast is going to call him John. There is no way Sonny is ever going to call him John. I'm not going to do you the respect of calling you the name you want me to call you. No, he's not. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's just going to be to get his goat, too. It's just going to be to get his goat. Just kind of like Uncle Luke used to always call Carly Car Caroline. Caroline. Well, toward the end, it was kind of an endearment thing. He, you know, it was. But at first, but it was the antagonizer. In the beginning, it was an antagonizer. Yeah, you don't like the name Caroline, so I'm going to call you Caroline instead of Carly like you want. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't undead stone. No, they certainly can't undead stone. Jeannie, you're totally right. If there's one character that's never going to be resurrected, it is stone. It would undo the map-making storyline of General Hospital's oh. history. And there's no way the writers would even want to do that. It was, they it wouldn't would touch be, it. Actually, um, it would be so disrespectful. Yeah. yeah. It really would. It would. It would. Uh, Austin's story went flat. What a shame for Roger. Roger had to leave. Roger was done. You are moving on to other things. Shut the door, girl. Thank you. What did Julian used to call Ned? Um, uh, something. What did he call him? Huh? He, Julian used to call Ned something. Oh, um, he would call him everything but Ned. He would call him Ted. <laughs> Ed, Ned, Shed. He would call him Ted, Ted a lot. Ted, Ted. He called him Ted. Ted a lot. It was Ted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think Donny. <laughs> uh, I think of Donny Osmond says Este. Uh, song uh, Donny Osmond's song "Pretty Blue Eyes" when he see when she sees Jagger on the screen. I am a huge Donny Osmond fan, and I do not know that song. Ooh, pretty blue eyes. Pretty blue eyes, Donny Osmond. It, mm -hmm. but it, mm -hmm. And I had all those albums when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I did. I'm old. I'm gonna put a nod on a couple of heads. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you know what? What? What's? What's unfortunate, mother, is that these children are proving that we cannot trust them while you podcast. I know. <laughs> uh, and at the very least, there's um. Well, I would say my suggestion would be, hey kids, there's no reason for you to be upstairs. Yeah, I might have to do that next time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not trust. They 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 trustworthy. <laughs> they just want to be stars. That's all. Anyway. They just want to be stars. We will give them one episode, fifteen mm -hmm. minutes, for them to just do whatever kid stuff they like. And that's it. <laughs> now, oh. Scarlett, get out of here and stay gone. <laughs> Uh, Blink used to love Julian. Uh, Jeannie loved David Cassidy. So there you go. Well, there you go. The the, the never-ending war. David Cassidy versus Donny Osmond. <laughs> Who's going to be on the cover of the magazine this week? Tiger Beat. Team Beat has Donny Osmond. Tiger Beat has, uh, has, has David Cassidy. Which one am I going to buy? I've only got 15 cents. I can't have them both. They were more than 15 cents. Oh, I'm sorry. This was at 1927. 
My bad. No. My bad. It's like 1975. I don't have 5.99. <laughs> I have five ninety nine. I can only have one of them. <laughs> Which pull out poster means the most to me? They want to see Uncle Matt. Aw, Kelly. I wish that was true. Um, they do want to see Uncle Matt. No. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. What were we talking about? Where are my notes? We were notes. talking about Sonny and Jagger. Oh yeah, Jagger, Sonny, Sonny, walk by Jagger. Never gonna call him John Cates, no matter what. I just don't know what's going on with that. I find myself um, having more difficulty podcasting about a show that I don't know the direction of. Yeah, we don't know the direction. I can't get on the speculation train because any number of cool things could be true. You know, I would get excited because I would come up with a good idea, and, but then like now, now we've got people who are probably gonna come up with better ideas than me. So you know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how to do well, this. I'm, I'm really look, I, I think in the next couple of weeks we're all going to get a little story on what's been happening with Jason. I think little by little, it's not going to be a huge long monologue. No, of real, 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 but we'll find little out by little, bit by bit, little piece, puzzle piece by puzzle piece, we're going to find out where he's been, and it might even create some havoc between he and Carly. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. So, you know, the battle lines have been drawn. There are two, you know, pretty much two armies being recruited on There's the side two camps, of huh? and against Jay-Z. You know, you got Carly, Michael, Willow on one side. You got Drew, Sonny, Lois, I guess, Ava on the other. You know, where's Dante going to ride? He was shot and saved. You know, yeah, Sam is on team, team anti-Jason. Jake yes. and Danny are probably going to find themselves on opposite sides. You know, I just, who knows, who knows what the future is. Uh, we have to do this right now, though, because all morning long, literally all morning long, the only thing that Blink FM has wanted to talk about is Maxie's sweater. This the is the one. most important thing in Blink's life. They have the mentioned one. it like, yeah, like, like clockwork every 10 minutes. So we got to get to it, Ma. I need you to rip this sweater to shreds so Blink will be happy. I would love to. I would love to. <laughs> she looks like Beetlejuice. A poor stripped down Beetlejuice. It's what she reminds Beetlejuice. me of. That sweater reminds me of. It is, it's, it. it I know it's fashion. I understand, but I don't like it. I don't like it. It. I. I think the sweater is ugly on a mannequin. I think the sweater is ugly on Maxie. I think the sweater is supposed to be stylish and stylish and tattered and look like that. It looks to me like it would be something that the Goodwill put in the in the burn pile. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, this, is, this is too. This is too worn out for us to resell. Oh, Fenella's on the way out. She's trying to go. Oh, she's trying to fall again. She's huh? trying to chase down the criminal. <laughs> she's popping in the room with 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 Jagger at her side. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm not a fan of that sweater either. It's got to go. I, I'm I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of most of the things that they dress Maxie in. I'm typically not much of a fan of anything they met dress Sam in. However, currently, I think it's been far better. Yeah. Currently. Yeah. I think that the fact that they put Sam in some color last week and had some pink on her and some mm -hmm. spring kind of, you know, they were show you that spring is coming. Um, it was nice. I, she doesn't I like need the, to be I like female the high-waisted fitted pants with the wide legs on Sam. I think her body's perfect for it. Um but some of the stuff they put her in the past, I thought, was ugly. Well, she's been uh, black jeans, black t-shirt kind of person, too. Yes. My favorite ones, who I who I think they dress the best, is um, I usually love what Olivia has on. Mm -hmm. um, I typically, not 100% of the time, but very often I like what Ava has on. I think they do um wardrobe it does not do Maxi any favors. And I also don't think that wardrobe does a whole lot for a Jeannie Francis Laura either. Mm, maybe that's just what they want to wear. Maybe that's what it they're comfortable with. It could be. 
it could be because you know I that that sweater that's so hideous mm-hmm. we saw it about a year ago and I remember it because I hated it then too but you know what ma that thing looks I awfully remember. comfortable it is it is worn in it well, is well you know you can know. <laughs> find something comfortable that doesn't have big wide stripes big wide horizontal stripes and uh you could also find something comfortable that doesn't look like it has moth holes in it right right <laughs> right uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kai- Kaiwan mentions the physical change of Kir- uh, Kristen Storms over the last couple of years. And all of that, 100% Kaiwan, in case you're unaware, is, is tied into uh, medical challenges and difficulties and medications that uh, that Kristen Storms has to take to keep uh, those issues at bay. Um, I can almost it's, guarantee it's not, you. It's not meatloaf, it's, it's steroids, you know? Yeah, I can almost guarantee you. I can guarantee you this girl is on some st- some steroids. She looks like she's taking prednisone to me. I have had to take it in my past. Yeah. Um, and as a nasty, you know what? That's a miracle drug. I'm sure some of you have taken it, prednisone. It's a miracle drug. But at the same time, it's got some nasty side effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, she has the uh, the the energy and the focus and the the health to uh, to continue to be on the show because I do enjoy Maxie. I think Maxie is a really great, versatile character. And when she's with Spinelli, she is no better. That stuff in the car on Monday was just so joyful. It, was it just made me feel so happy. Not because, oh, Maxine's, but I didn't see them the first time. I just think that they're cute together, you know? Um, so, you know, all that, ooh, Spixie. Like, I, I, I don't have memories. I, I know what they did, but I don't, I don't have the emotional connection. So this is where I'm going to have it. Um, I just have always liked Maxie and I've always liked Spinelli. So they were just super adorable in that car. Their banter they was amazing. I, uh, I always thought <laughs> I loved Spinelli and Maxie together. I always have. They never really like really, really made it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They they always had obstacles and they never really like, you know, they never moved in together. They were they were a couple, but they were always just Almost a couple, but almost not a couple kind of thing. And, you know, I I love Spinelli because he loves his Maximista so much. Yes, yes, yes. Blink immediately wants to flush it down the toilet by bringing Nathan back. Blink, come on. Blink, let them have at least five minutes. Well, you know, I always say that you never know what General Hospital's going to do. Nathan, Nathan was, even though we never saw him in a bag, we did see him pretty dead. We saw him very dead. Like we, we saw, saw him dying in front of Max on the floor of the crimson, right? No, no, no. That was that was that was what's her name? Uh, like he didn't die there. He died in the hospital. He woke up, had one final conversation with Maxie. It seemed like everything was going to be okay, and then code blue flatline gone. They and, just kept on going back to crimson and showing the blood spot on the ground. Yeah, because Faison had shot him, and it was a big deal, Faison and, shot. and all that kind of stuff. See, I didn't have a big emotional connection to Nathan either, because I, I I started watching hardcore when he was exiting. I saw his death, but uh, when it comes to like his whole romance with with Maxie, I I didn't see it. I thought he was you know an adorable looking dude who always stuck his hands in his pockets. You know, that's the only thing that I know about Nathan. They could they could bring him back some crazy way though. Oh, you know, totally bring him back. But his his I, mom I'm gonna, is, is. I'm going to disagree with. I'm going to disagree with Blink though. I don't think if Nathan comes back, that's the end of Spixy. All right, oh, Spinelli no. came before Nathan. I don't care how much you love that guy. But but when it comes to st- historically though, Maxie's most successful, least complicated, most successful relationship was with Nathan. Well, then leave him dead. <laughs> <laughs> it was his most successful um was with nathan that was when she was the happiest and remained happy for a more continuous time but at the same time though you know when soap operas you guys um happiness what happens with happiness oh uh, well boredom sets it yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you gotta keep it mixed up and, and exciting you know, Shut the door. There, there needs to be, uh, there needs to be a threat on their lives or a threat to their relationship, but they can't just be sitting around playing checkers. No. You know, you know, like we, 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 you know, you get a cool couple of scenes, you know, a New Year's scene, a Fourth of July scene, a Valentine's scene, like Sam and Dante. You know, when things are going well, you're not seeing their every single day life of them together, but when they're facing challenges, 
you see that relationship. Yes. Ah, oh, what about Ava's brother? Is he really dead? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, um, I, I just... Well, okay, here's the thing. Julian, Jerome, and Will DeVry are different people. Julian Jerome may come back to the show. It seems as though Will DeVry and General Hospital did not separate on the happiest of notes. So I don't know what sort of that. future there is there. As well. You know, and it could be nothing more than just, I want to continue and you don't want me. You know, you know nothing, mm -hmm. nothing beyond that. Of mm -hmm. just wanting to continue the opportunity in the show. Going, no, we're done with Julian. Um, but it didn't seem like it was the happiest of splits. And so I just don't know what sort of interest level there even is um, on that. Not saying that it wouldn't happen, couldn't happen, mm -hmm. or anything like that. I just don't know where they are. I don't know if the name Julian has come up like it has Morgan uh, when it comes to... Oh, Morgan's come up a few times. Yeah. It has. Well, even in the conversations with the characters, he's come up as well. Not enough for me to say, oh, he's on his way back. But we haven't forgotten. And, we, and you know, we don't know who... Dex is somebody as well. We're going to mm -hmm. find out Dex is somebody other than Dex. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. we're about to find that out. He is... Um, for me, he leaves, right, because of the Sunny situation. Mm -hmm. Jocelyn essentially convinces him to come back. And as soon as he sees that Jason is back in town, he gets super squirrely and wants to leave again. Yeah. Not being, he, he hasn't mentioned it. He's not, oh, because Jason's back, I gotta leave. You know, but his like initial, like, well, maybe I could try to make it, is gone again. And he's like, I gotta go. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing Jason has been working for a private military contractor. Yes. Where did Michael find Dex? With a private military contractor. Oh, I didn't think about that. You're right. It's entirely possible that he knows Jason from some sort of thing, some sort of past, some sort of previous. And mission. he could. Well, he would Jason think... could have even sent Dex to Michael because Michael was was poking around looking to hire somebody, and Jason found out. Said Dex, "You need to do this." Could be. It's entirely could possible. Could be. Could be, could be. I know that there's just, you know, there's just going to be all kinds of new stuff going on. And, and honestly, I, you know, I think we got a couple of like, you know, surprises coming. Oh, definitely. We're going to find out if Dex's dad and he's somebody in town. He's Jagger. He's Jason. He's, he's AJ's. He's somebody's. He's somebody's. He's somebody's. Definitely. He's somebody's and he knows it. Yes. Um, yes, I guess Jocelyn and Josh, Josh, Jocelyn pretty much dumped him too at the end of the week, didn't he? Didn't she? Uh, kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of, but you know, Dex was Dex was being dirty, okay? He knew he was gonna leave again. First thing he has to do is, oh, well, let me hit that one last time again, right? Again, and maybe this is character trait, mom. Maybe he isn't as like, oh, Josh, <laughs> you're so wonderful, as he's been saying. Yeah, perhaps maybe he's just hitting that, you know. While he's doing his other dirty business, he could be a triple agent. He could be. For all we know. You know, this could be a big, big deal for know. Dex. He could be a double cross and triple agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With four houses and five cars. Exactly. Six kids. <clears throat> Blink thinks I'm right. I don't know what, 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 what they think I'm right about, but thanks, Blink. <laughs> <clears throat> Jeannie's okay if Dex is Jason's. Oh, me too. Me too. Jason, but Jason's not going to be this. He's going to, or is he going to be the same old Jason in some regards? Absolutely. But he's going to be a little different. He's not going to be mafia Jason anymore. I don't think. No. No. Nope. I think he's going to be a little more fascinating. We tried to save you. So here's the thing. Um, I think, I think Sonny even said it this week already. Um, it may be less about Jason being gone and forgetting how to be loyal. Or maybe he did forget how to be loyal by marrying Carly and then disappearing for a couple of years. It might not just be, I couldn't find him. He never called me. It could be, he didn't look hard enough for me when they thought I was dead. He didn't pick up on Nina being suspicious. He married Carly. He hasn't called me in a couple of years. This could be five years of Sonny thinking about, well, he didn't do this, and this is different, and this changed, and this, and this. He's yeah. forgotten how to be loyal to me. I lost him. Be the first time. Yeah. 
Yep. Be the first time that somebody did that, really. Yep. Mm. Yep. 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 Oh, Ke Kelly, 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 are you watching a different show than us? Kelly says that Dex found out that his dad is Mac. I think you're you're conflating Dex with Cody. Yeah. In that one. Cody. Because Cody, Cody for sure is Mac, is Max kid. We're just waiting on John J. York, who apparently is still doing very well in his treatments. To come on back too. to GH to continue that story. We're certainly waiting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Melissa's here. Who else showed up that I didn't read? Uh, Melissa, Sandra, Jeannie, Lily. I think that's it. Anybody else? Say hey. Say hi. Say hi. Hi, you guys. Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, what else do we need to cover uh, before we call it quits and you can go be a grandma again? Um, <laughs> the cops have Rico charges on Carly, suggests Melissa. It's either Carly or Michael. One of the two. Probably Carly. The predominant theory out there is, is that uh, is that it's Rico charges from her being uh, the, the leader of the mafia for that, that short amount of time while well, Sunny was away. Because in, well, it's a had, very short lived, but. Well, in that time, though, she blew up Cyrus's um, shipment. Yeah. You know, she got married. I don't know. She, oh, she kidnapped Cyrus's mom and hid, and hid her away. Yeah. Uh, on top of then after leaving the mafia, uh, she she did and got caught doing insider trading. So all of these things added together could be enough Rico violations for them to say 20 years for that lady. Hmm. I think it's more likely than Michael. I don't uh, I don't know really exactly what they would catch Michael on. Um, and I also don't know what Jason would give years of his life to if it wasn't for Carly. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have been Sam. And it's certainly not his kids, because his kids probably don't have Rico charges. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, Kelly's doing a Zoom with Mac and Felicia in July, so look cool. forward to that. To that in a couple of months. Uh, we just saw it looked like Sandy's not a naughty and nice list. Your list we just saw looked like Sandy's naughty and nice list. A list that they just saw. I don't know what you mean, Kelly. Sorry. Um, we got to talk about Finn and Elizabeth and Jake and Danny, and I think that'll be it. Okay. Finn and Elizabeth, adorable. Absolutely never better. Monday was insanely good. I think it was good, too. And I think that since they are showing us that Finn and Elizabeth are so happy, there's something going to wrench is going to get in there. Unless they're getting married. <laughs> Maybe Hayden's on her way back or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's possible that they're just in a good spot and this is a good developing relationship that will lead to a marriage that will lead to drama. I don't know. I don't know. But things are good. Know. Things are progressing. What the, it might not be riddled with angst, but it's riddled with development. You yes. Know, they went from like, we're attracted to each other to we're a good team to we're boning in the shower to now you are starting to really interact with my kids. Yes. And do father kind of stuff. Hey, what's this, Jake? What's this? Yeah. Hey, no judgment. Just curious. <laughs> you know, handle it well. Jake, of course, cannot tell a lie. He's Abraham Lincoln. No. Yeah, he lied a little bit. I, I, thought that, I, I, I thought that they handled that pretty well, even even if they, um, and I, I think they do believe him, but even if they ultimately didn't really believe him, I think they gave him Colin Olive Branch to a certain degree of um well we'll just test this out you know yeah anything yeah yeah i thought they handled it pretty well i thought both of them did yeah yeah they did they, they did fantastic yeah, they did as characters as parents as as people who are trying to influence the young mind of jake excellent job as actors excellent job as script writers excellent job was it a little after school specially a little bit but you can only do after school specials when it comes to not smoking there's no way even in real life, when you're having a conversation with your kids about not smoking, there's no way for you to not say things like, well, just don't do it. Say no. It's unhealthy. It leads to right. can't. Like, there's no way to not be a Saturday, you know, afternoon special about yeah. it. So you can expect that a little bit when it comes to mm -hmm. the conversation, the things they're talking about, sure. the tonality. Well, what if, you know, now he's now he's just mad at me. I didn't stop him from doing it. I just damaged our relationship. It's mm -hmm. a little on the nose, but it's a real thing. It's mm -hmm. a real observation. It's a real fear that somebody might have. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for it. I'm with it. I'm happy. 
Mm-hmm. I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Um, covering for Danny. Danny was 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 decent, you know, during the week as well. You know, that kid's warming up. Yeah. You know, it, uh, Danny was uh, so. Uh, Danny's excited about his dad. Very excited about his dad. Yeah. So I think if we're going to have a split, it is going to be a uh, team. Danny is going to be a uh, pro Jason and Jake's going to be pissed at him. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, I think they really set the, the, the foundation for that, even if it was unintentional, uh, when it came to Charlotte's, uh, shooting, because Danny was like, I need to rush in there and protect everybody. I feel so bad that I allowed this to happen. And Jake mm-hmm. was like, guns need to be melted. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, they're setting up Danny versus Jake on multiple levels, says Michelle. I don't know what the multiple levels would be, but at least, um, g- maybe goody two shoes versus more rebel rebellious, you know, um, here's the thing. All right, Ma, they, this, this is just striking my brain right now. So it's undeveloped. Um, Sam keeps on talking about, Oh, Danny, you take after Jason, you take after Jason, you take after Jason, you take after Jason. He was drawn to danger. He wanted to, you know, his life wasn't as valuable as the people that he loved. You know, he, he, he snuck off to get information about things that he thought he needed to know more information about, you know, that sort of stuff. He is Jason Morgan. Jake might turn out to be Jason Quartermain. Honest, true. Yes. Hard working, Lord, yes. you know, he's low, you know, yes. new Jason small, but you know, you know what I mean? All of yeah. these yeah. not yeah. edgy traits. Yeah. So that, that might well, be yeah. one, you know, be higher to bump on the head. <laughs> yeah. One, one's before the bump. The other one's after the bump. Yeah. That might be interesting. That might be interesting. <laughs> that might be what they're setting up. And that could then give us that AJ Jason, mm-hmm. you know, and, and out of the two of them, you know, Elizabeth, has she been perfect? No, but she hasn't been, um, is out there living on the rails like Sam was. Once upon no, a time. no, no, no. Um, I, I recognize that, you know, Elizabeth hasn't always made the right choice in her life. Mm-hmm. She did lie to Drew about him really being Jason when he was Jake, mm-hmm. you know, and that whole yes. convoluted thing. But Jake wasn't around for that. No. He was dead. So he missed Elizabeth doing that. Um, And then when it comes down to it, when she helped Nicholas hide Esme in the attic, she pretty much finished that and went, hey, police, this is what I did. Yeah. So Jake had a positive uh, example of what to do from Elizabeth in that situation. On top of them showcasing time and time again that Elizabeth is an effective and attentive mother. Yes, I have. Yeah. 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 Ooh. That's good. That's good. Jake and Danny are forming a dichotomy, says Melissa. That's one of them $15 words. <laughs> uh, thinking that will make them have differences in morals and gray areas as they grow. This will, period. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, they're both experiencing the same things, but differently. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Jake just doesn't know that, uh, you know, well, Jake didn't happen across shot Jason. So we'll see what happens if that happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, Stephanie really likes what I said. Well, thank you very much, Stephanie. Make sure that the writers know that I said it. Maybe they'll work it in. <laughs> and so what else do we need to talk about? Uh, I mean, I wanted to talk about Finn and Liz, but we did. I mean, there really wasn't yeah. much to say other than they, they're they really nice. Like, if, if, if you still have a problem with Finn and Liz, you're just holding on to animosity. <laughs> I'll tell you what Nana did to Gregory in that office. What Nina did to Gregory in Alexis's office. I just wanted to just. What did she do? She made a reaction to this, but I don't recall seeing it myself. Well, because uh, you know, um, Gregory had his, had his, his uh, story that it was all marked up because he had just visited Finn. Now it doesn't make sense. You guys, I know it doesn't make sense. You know, he made typos. His ability to write is still there. He made typos. He doesn't need his son for that. He could have proofread his own thing. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. 
but that's not the way they decided to show. No, they they needed a way to uh, to depict how how much ALS is affecting uh, Gregory. Uh, is it a little old school? Yes. Sure, you know, if this was like I'm working on a typewriter type of time, yeah, of, type of time, it was. Yes. But it was with, very old school with the voice to speech it. and autocorrect and that kind of stuff and all yes. sorts of accessibility uh, that exists now it, gregory shouldn't be experiencing this but for the sake of telling gregory's story he is right <laughs> so so nina gets copy of of his story that's all marked up mm -hmm. and she makes some you know she insults mm -hmm. saying that well, it's all, mar all marked up and, you know, this person, she, she acted, she, she, she implied that they were either illiterate or just, you know, not Here, capable. Here's my question. And Stephanie, Stephanie asks it well in the, in the chat. Does Nina know that Gregory has ALS? If she doesn't, I... then she sees a garbage piece of, of work in front of her. In, at her newspaper that Alexis is allowing to happen. Yes, I don't know. I don't know that she knows. I don't know that she knows, but she was regardless. Demeaning. She was being an ass either way. Demeaning. Yes. Insulting. Yes. Treating him like a like a like an illiterate kindergartner. Yes. I didn't, I didn't, Nina was like, oh, well, Nina's billing again. All right. We, we, we have, uh, we have jumped is. off of, is Nina actually the good person? And we are in the land of Nina is the bad guy. Yeah. We are firmly in the land of Nina is the bad guy. And you can see it in how she's running the, the, the newspaper, this, this gossip columnist and the redheaded mate, you know, dating the DA and, and uh, mm -hmm. the, the smear job. Yes. Of Sunny. You know, mm -hmm. and how, you know, she, she pretty much is like, don't, you don't report on Sunny, which is not how somebody runs a fair and balanced newspaper. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, this person's just off limits. Don't, don't, don't do it. Right. That's, that's not the moral thing. Mm -hmm. Nina. <laughs> <laughs> the way that Nina spoke to Gregory was beyond rude, even in regards to a fully rude. healthy adult. She spoke to him like a child. She, Yeah. Yeah, and she talked down to him. Mm -hmm. Not only as a you know a child, yes, but you don't necessarily talk down to a child. You talk to them in a way that they can understand. I'll have to go back and listen to Friday. Down to them. Friday, she right. talked down to him. I'll go back and watch. And maybe, uh, maybe I didn't finish Friday. And uh, Nina uh, deserves Alexis's foot right in her ass. No, I did finish Friday because the last thing was Kevin saying that Marshall was misdiagnosed because he was young, poor. Mm -hmm. Angry mm -hmm. and black. Yes. Credits. Yes. Yes. And even though that even though that doctor is dead, they're still going to tell the story. Yes. Absolutely. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, about, folks. And this will be the last thing before we hop on the elevator. Because we gotta we gotta have something be the last thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was the last thing of the week, so why not? Um, the way that they're handling the acceleration of the storyline worked with this one line and this one line alone, because we really went from, we're gearing up to two months of hunt and conversation and casting this doctor and a whole big, deep mm -hmm. exploration into, oh no, he's dead. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Very obvious, very obvious. But in Stella's line and Verne Watson's portrayal of the answers mm -hmm are in this hospital, right mm -hmm. upstairs in this hospital, carried so much, mm -hmm. what's, what's the right thing? Carried with it so much, um, the path has been cleared for this thing that we should have always known. Mm -hmm. um, the obstacles in our way have evaporated. And the answers have been right here this whole time. Entire We've never time. had to look hard. We've never had to be challenged. We've never had to reach beyond what our capabilities of or compromise who we are in order mm -hmm. to get these answers. They have always just been right here. And in the way that it was written and in the way that she performed it, sold that acceleration to me mm -hmm. completely. And I know that I'm a dork, but it did. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I know it. 
I know it, but it's little things like that. Like I, like I said a couple of weeks ago, you know, I enjoy a good sequence, but give me a good moment. Mm -hmm. I live for a good moment. And that's what I got yes. from Brene Watson this week. So, hey, Jakari, yes, you're late. We're, we're getting on the elevator. <laughs> As Jakari yeah, bursts but, you know, through the stairs. But I think, you know, I, I hope that's not the end of the conversation. I hope we hear some more. I'm sure. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we'll get some reaction. And this, and you know, if Marshall is on the way out, then this, you know, this could be, hey, you know, I've, I've done what I'm supposed to do. Now I need to go find myself again or something, you know. Uh, maybe Stella will take him to Europe with her, you know, because she's you often. You advocate for others that have been mis mm -hmm. been misdiagnosed. Yeah, you could do a national tour of, of through hospitals or, or some sort of, some sort of uh, mental health agency maybe maybe sunny can create a a, a a foundation for him to travel and, and speak maybe. You, know, maybe you know and maybe he'll just pop in every once in a while like stella does maybe he and stella yeah. will run off together realizing that they have yes. unyielding and undying love well, and when stella know. shows up marshall will be there too and they'll just become a, a couple package deal there's any all sorts of maybes and Verne has been in and out of a general hospital for some time now. Yeah. We have weeks where we don't see her. And then she pops up and she's in story for a month or so. Yeah, exactly. And she exactly. takes off to England again. Go, goes away for two, three months, comes back for a few weeks, maybe a couple of days, leaves. You know, it's very, you know, they do a great job when it comes to the logic of Stella being in town or not. Right. Now, of course, there are no way is Marshall going to leave without seeing um Curtis take his first step. Oh, absolutely. 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 It's okay, Jacarius. You don't have to apologize. We're no. always here. We're always <laughs> here. Um, Blink agreed. Blink, Blink felt it too with Stella. So I'm not alone in being my massive dork about that great moment. So mm -hmm. thank you, Blink. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's it. Chandra gave you know, Cheryl chocolate chip cookies. Well, good. One thing that's kind of interesting is, is um, there was a point when they were... Um, there was a mixed group of people and and there's no HEPA. I mean, they were just talking about everybody's business right there in front of the elevators, weren't they? Uh, they were. They were. But I noticed that too. Mixed bag of people. Mm, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people just need information somehow. Yeah, I guess. Uh, maybe well, maybe, they they, maybe there was a... It away, they kind of explain it away with Laura has privy because she's the mayor. Yeah, this is an active and open criminal investigation. <laughs> Uh, Marshall's automatically thinking he was purposely my misdiagnosed, never set well with me. Ask Portia, have you ever been misdiagnosed a uh, person on purpose or indeed, or maybe because it was a mistake? Ooh, Melissa, you were missing the point of the, of the, of the story. This was so on purpose. This was an egregious abuse of power in order to hold down a minority just because they hated him for being black. That is the story. It's nothing to do with real medical professionals doing the right thing or making a mistake like Finn did for going to trial. This was a person being blatantly asshole that's racist and was well known for it. So much so that Kevin was like, oh, that asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't feel and he didn't feel any kind of um, any kind of remorse or a feeling protective in any way of that gentleman. He's like, let me sit down and tell you. Mm hmm. There you, go. there you go. Why would he be mad about being well? Because he feels like he wasted his life. Sure. Because he did. He well, loved to protect his family and he did not have to miss a second with his boys. He, he probably feels, feels he could have saved his, his, his other kid's life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and perhaps, and, and perhaps his wife wouldn't, you know, she died maybe, of a broken heart. They said, right? Yes. Maybe, maybe it would have been even been different with her. I am sure he carries a bevy, like learning that, oh, this isn't real. I haven't taken medicine in a year and I've never even seen a flicker of something that might not be legitimate is flipping huge, especially for somebody who's 70, right. who literally walked away from the life that he loved and wanted mm -hmm. to go play the saxophone or clarinet for tips right. in seedy bars. His whole life. Right. Until finally he said, F this. Let me go find my kid. This is sucks. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there, there, there is a depth to explore with Marshall. And I hope that we get it. I hope so, too. You know, I'm just nervous about the recurring thing. That's all. That's all. That's all. Yeah. 
Uh, remember that Marshall was doing protests at the time as well, Rachel reminds us. Another key factor as well. I don't know if you, you were around, Melissa. You might, you probably weren't, but the 60s was a time of incredible upheaval. Mm-hmm. Huge upheaval. Deadly upheaval. Mm-hmm. They, they, you know, we, 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 we lost, uh, we lost uh, John Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Robert Kennedy, Malcolm X. So many progressive and liberal leaders. Maybe yes. not so much Malcolm X, but you know, you, you get my drift. Yeah. Uh, progressive and liberal leaders yeah. were taken in the 60s for yes. how much power they had, how much good they were doing, how much movement they were creating, and how much education was being spread coast to coast. Mm-hmm. And if just imagine what life would be like today if these people were not silenced, like Marshall was. Yes. Oh, it's quite the story, and I'm just very curious to see how it all goes down. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's it, everybody. Get on the elevator. We're done. <laughs> Get on the elevator. Go back down to the first floor. Everything's fine. Dante's okay. He's not out of the woods, well, but it seems okay. like he's, he's going to be all right. He's still taking a long nap, but he's okay. So he's far. not out of the woods, but it seems like he's on. He hasn't lost the trail. You know. No. Looks like he's on the path <laughs> to recover. I got a text from mom like a week and a half ago. Oh, that's it. Dante's gone. Don't come to us for the news. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I, th- I thought he was going to be dead. Oh. I was even I was even on James' show, and I, and I was uh, in the chat, and I said, "I think Dante's dead." <laughs> <laughs> he ain't. He ain't. He ain't. Uh, and just to connect to General Hospital to so Robert Kennedy, apparently Corbin Burnson, who played Carly's um, Carly's Daddy. bio dad, yeah, was in the hotel when RFK was shot. I do remember hearing him talking about and that. I yes, guess, yeah. Um, he, uh, she she follows up. He tells the story line, so apparently it's something that he, he talks about. And we way. stayed in the hotel. Remember, Matt? Did we? The hotel that we stayed in in Hollywood, where yeah. we, where we where we met little Michael. That was that one. Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. I didn't know that at all. My goodness, I wonder if I felt a spiritual connection to RFK. I felt a, I felt more. I like listen. I don't know these people. I wasn't alive. Um, but I was reading, I've read, you know, I've read history, I've read uh, articles, I've seen documentaries and stuff. I'm vaguely, you know, I'm not going to say I'm an expert, but I'm somewhat familiar with John and Robert Kennedy. And when it came down to it, I would have voted for Bobby. Like oh. if they said, vote for one or vote for John, vote for Bobby, I would have voted for Bobby. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, oh, if he wouldn't have been, if he wouldn't have been executed, he, he would have been president. Won. He, he would have been, been president. He would have been an absolutely eight strong ass president. He was. He was loved like John. Now I don't remember. John Kennedy was murdered, uh, executed in 1963. I was two years old, so of course I don't remember that. But I do remember Bobby being. I do me- remember that happening to Bobby. I think I was in the fourth grade. Yeah. And they announced it in my classroom. They said it in my classroom. Mm. Stopped and said that that had happened to Robert Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Well, Melissa okay. says Melissa. Melissa's writing for the um the uh the invader now. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here first. Mama Cat tried to sniper Matt out of the RFK hotel. He was saved by Dylan Cash. <laughs> there writing, you go. <laughs> writing for the for the invader, Melissa is. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Hey, Michelle, thanks for coming. Uh, just. You just continue to watch the podcast and we're going to tell you all about General Hospital and all about all sorts of fun American soaps that you might not see in South Africa. Just continue to hang out with us. Absolutely. Anyway, folks, out of here, out of here, out of here, out of here. <laughs> into the parking garage. We're going to go into their cars, turn our radios to previous episodes of the 10th floor, which you can find on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. If you can't find it on your favorite podcasting platform, you can reach out to me on Twitter at 10th floor GH and I will send you in the right direction. Mm-hmm. While you're there, you can go ahead and follow us there and on Instagram as well. Don't use it as much, but we're there. Facebook, all of that. Follow us on those socials. Get some info, a couple of pictures, maybe a game or two. Who knows? No. But you can join the chat that we have all week long on Days of Our Lives <laughs> in General Hospital on Twitter. Um, We're, we're going to be back next week. Mm-hmm. 9 a.m. for Days for Dummies. I think my mom is going to be back on that show. Yes, I am. And then at 11 a.m. right here again for 10th floor. Mm-hmm. That's it. 
Go spend some time with your families. I've been Matt. I've been Kat. And we'll catch you next time right here on the 10th floor. Goodbye, everybody.